Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at yet another Aqua L filter. This one is another canister filter but it's a really small version and I'd never heard of this one just like I'd never heard of the previous Aqua L and to be honest I'd never even heard of Aqua L until about a year ago uh, as a company, you know. Never mind the canister filters and apparently they do quite a lot of different ones. Now this one is a little bit different because the pump actually sits externally. It, um, and I don't mean that as in the whole canister sits externally, of course it does. The pump sits apart from the actual canister filter, which allows you to use it either in the tank or in line. It's an unusual sort of concept. And I'll take it out of the box, we'll see the various ways of putting this thing together. Um, open the top up and have a look at the trays. What I'm really hoping is that the available space in that canister is maximised by not having that big thick pump head on the top, but time will tell. Okay, so we've got the normal bits of pipe. That's good. And then we've got the filter. Which looks fine. And then we've got the various pipe fittings and parts. And then we've got the most intriguing part, which is the pump. Now because this is a brand new filter, I don't want to take everything out of the bags. But basically we've got the standard Shepherd's Crook type fittings, the strainer, all the necessary clips and everything for a normal sort of external in and out sort of pipe setup. And on this one, we've just got a sort of a, a duck's bill attachment. Doesn't seem as if we've got a spray bar, but I'm sure you could rig one up if you had any old parts. Then we've got the inline pump. Okay, so we've got a direction of flow there. Just see the arrow? So basically, if you had this sitting on the inside of your tank, it would just suck around to the side. You'd have your intake pipe on here with your strainer drawing water in, firing water out, into your canister filter. It's a really simple setup. And I really like the idea of having a separate pump. I would never have thought of that, because I always just assumed that they had to be in here, but of course they don't. Uh, where are we? There we go. So we've got an in and an out. They go down into here, and I'll show you where the particular pipes go once they go into here. So here we've got the intake, marries up with that. That pipe goes all the way down to the bottom and then the water rises up through the trays. And really when you look at that, and the fact that that sits over the top of there, we've got no wasted space in this little canister at all. And that's a great move by Aqua L. You know, having that external pump frees up a good two to two and a half inches in the top of here, which of course has been taken up by an extra tray. So we've got a plastic strap that goes all the way around the trays. And again, that is a cracking idea because this isn't going to rot, it's not going to affect the water. And it means that we don't have to have any stupid fiddly handles on here to lift the trays out. And what that means is we've got a very basic tray design. And that's spot on, you know, that's what I want to see in a filter. Just something basic, you know, you can pack that out with media, there's no wasted space in there. Good stuff. So, that was our top tray. That's basically what the water hits last. Uh, that is coarse sponge. It doesn't really want to be in there. Next tray down, we've got some filter floss. That's decent stuff. You can use that if you want, but that would tend to go... Well, I'll, I'll show you where everything should be. That's basically filter floss, uh, not necessarily in the right place. We've then got a fairly hefty bag of zeolite. I would guess there's maybe... I don't know, minimum of 500 grams, possibly 700 grams in there. And then we've got some reasonable quality ceramic rings by the looks of it. They look okay, but everything's kind of arse end round. You know, the water goes to the bottom and then it comes up through the trays, so it doesn't want to be hitting that first. So basically, the way it's set up now, the water's going biological chemical, 
fine mechanical, coarse mechanical. That doesn't make much sense. So let's put it back together in a way that does make sense. Now before we start adding any new stuff to this and pimping it up and improving it, if you just want to keep whatever comes with the filter as the main filter media and don't want to change anything, I'll show you how to set it up in the correct order. Just remember to take all this stuff out of the bags, obviously, because you want the water to actually get to those rings. I have heard of some people setting filters up and they've left the media in the bags and then they've wondered why the fish have been dying, you know? <laughs> okay, so because our water comes from the bottom up, the bottom tray would have the coarse sponges in, then it would be fine. So the bottom of our filter would take care of all the mechanical sort of filtration. Then we would have our ceramic rings, so that would be the biological filtration. Then we would have our zeolite, and that would be the chemical filtration. So set it up that way if you just want to keep and use everything that comes with the filter. I really like the design of this. I really do. I love the idea that the pump can be outside the tank or it could be inside the tank. Um, the most important thing is that it's not in here. It's not taking up that useful space in this small filter. And I think we're going to get a canny bit of media in here. Um, yeah, I like this so far. So, I'll empty all these trays out. And then I'll show you how I would set it up. You don't have to set it up the same way as me. But if you want to maximize the potential of this little filter, at least you're going to know how to. Right, so we've taken everything out, apart from a coarse sponge. I've left one of those coarse sponges in there. I'm going to add, let's see how thick that is. Yeah, I'm going to add a medium sponge on top of that, and then I'm going to go with a, a quite a thin, fine pad on top of that. And hopefully that will all fit in the bottom tray, which will enable the bottom quarter of our filter to do all the mechanical work instead of the bottom half. That's going to save us a lot of space. And it's going to enable these top three trays to be filled with biological media. It's a good fit, and I think we might just about get a fine pad on top of there as well. Oh, actually, while I'm cutting this fine pad, I'd just like to say thank you to Dragos, who sent me this filter. Much appreciated. I had never heard of this filter, and already I'm a fan. So thanks very much to Dragos for sending me this. That's an awesome name, isn't it? You'd expect him to be a character off Game of Thrones or something. Dragos. Yeah, that's all right. I think once the next one goes in here and has a bit of weight to it, I think we'll squash that in okay. Because these trays do fit very well inside each other. Oh, way I. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. Right, so that is our coarse, medium and fine sponges or pads or whatever in there. All our mechanical work is going to be done in here. Water is going to be clean for when it hits the media, which is of utmost importance. Never use a fine pad on the top if your water is flowing from bottom to top. A fine pad on the top will concentrate all the crap in your media. I know I say it almost every episode of Pimp My Filter. It's so important that you don't spend a fortune on good media and then just clog it up by having the pad in the wrong place. In any filter, the water polishing or mechanical cleaning is done before the water hits the media. If anybody tells you otherwise, they are talking bollocks. Right, so now we've got three trays. What am I gonna fill them with? Each one of these trays holds 750 grams of Biohome Ultimate, or over a kilo of the Bio Gravel. But what I haven't mentioned so far in this video is the pump that comes with this system 
is only 650 litres per hour, which is about 171 US gallons per hour. Now, that's what that pump will pump as a maximum. When you connect everything up and you get all your foams in and pipes and media and everything, that 650 litres per hour will apparently reduce down to about 350 litres per hour. And remember, when we're doing filters, I always say with a canister filter, you can roughly halve what the pump will actually pump as a maximum. So say you had a thousand litre an hour pump, in reality, it's going to be pushing just over 500 litres an hour. So that is pretty accurate, I would say. Um, so the actual output, once everything's connected, is about 350 litres per hour, which is 92 US gallons per hour. That isn't a lot. And it's a very low wattage pump. It's only 6 watts. So I think if we pack the media in as tightly as it is with the biogravel, we might get further flow restrictions. It might reduce the flow down too much with the bio gravel. So I think we're gonna go all three trays bio home ultimate. Just pour it in loosely. The water can easily get round it. It's not gonna restrict it like I think it will with the bio gravel. So I'll tip this out, fill it with a bio home ultimate, put it back together, give you my thoughts. We've got a bit of a complication with the top tray because we haven't got any sort of grid that goes over the top of here. Obviously, we haven't got a pump in the top of here, so if our filter falls over, it's not going to damage the pump at all, you know, getting a bit of media stuck in it or whatever. Not that it would get through that little hole anyway. But what I'm going to do is only put 500 grams in the top of here, followed by the extra coarse pad that I took out the bottom, and that'll allow that to sit on the top of there, and for transport purposes, back to Dragos, that will be a good option. So we'll get these put back together, like so. And I absolutely love that simple idea. It's, it's basically just the stuff you'd use for strapping a pallet up. It's just plastic strapping, but it's glued into this bottom tray. So, you know, there's what, two kilos of media there? That's not going to come off. That makes getting those trays out so easy. And I don't know why that simple system isn't used on other canister filters. You know, Aqua L are doing a cracking job of innovating something that has gone pretty stale over the last few years. Good. So that's our filter done. That's going to be suitable for transport back. Now the actual output of the pump might not be suitable for bigger tanks, but what we've got in here makes this particular setup here suitable for a full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite and very low nitrates using the biohome on a tank of up to 200 litres, which is roughly 52 US gallons. Now if the tank was heavily stocked, say it was a cichlid tank, a goldfish tank, a predator tank, or indeed a marine tank, this would be suitable for nearer 100 litres or 26 US gallons. Now this part of the video was actually shot after I'd finished shooting the video. I was packaging this thing up and I was thinking about that limited output of the pump and then I thought, well, the limited output could be made to work for you or for your tank because if you have this thing as a really low flow filter it would effectively be a nitrate reactor all you would need to do is have a, a main canister filter doing the grunt work you know shifting the water around oxygenating the water and so on you could fill that with pretty much anything this one if you filled it up all four trays or maybe it's the top three trays with Bio gravel, you can get over three kilos in here, set it all up, have your pump, put an inline valve in, turn that right down so you've got a very slow flow going through here and you'll have a very, very effective nitrate reactor. So that is an extra use for this.